One of the factors that brought down the Roman Empire was the many attacks in Europe. This continued into the Middle Ages or Dark Ages of medieval times. One of the earliest leaders of this time was Charlemagne, Charles the Great, from the Kingdom of the Franks. He tried to unite all of Europe by making them Catholic and by educating them. Many attacks caused the Europeans to look for a system that they could protect themselves, and this system was feudalism. Feudalism was set up to defend against attackers. As a result, many people lived within the kingdom on a manor or farm, and this farm was self-sufficient, which means that it had everything it needed and did not need any contact with the outside world during times of war. Feudalism was a system of hierarchy that went all the way from kings to nobles to knights to peasants. It was a reciprocal relationship, and many people signed feudal contracts, which meant that something was promised in return for something else, oftentimes land for loyalty. Atop the hierarchy was the Roman Catholic Church. The Pope had papal supremacy, which meant that the Pope had supreme authority over all kings and leaders. This was mostly because the Pope had control over the afterlife of every individual that lived in Europe, and only he could guarantee a life in heaven. The church had their own hierarchy. Monks were required to take the Benedictine oath of poverty, chastity, purity, and obedience. Priests were charged with helping people fulfill the sacraments. If they successfully fulfilled them, they were guaranteed a life in heaven. If they were excommunicated or for some reason didn't fulfill the sacraments, they, they would achieve a life somewhere else. And sometimes popes could actually put an entire kingdom under interdict, which means that the entire kingdom and all its people were excommunicated. By about 1000 AD, or the middle of the Middle Ages, life started to change. Attacks became less prevalent and people moved into cities and towns. They were often crowded and dirty and sanitation was a problem. However, cities, just like cities today, offered a lot of entertainment and offered a lot of opportunity. Guilds ran these cities. Guilds were organizations of craft workers and they would set prices. If one wanted to become a member of a guild, he would first have to become an apprentice, an unpaid worker for seven years, and then a journeyman, and then hopefully a member of the guild, which would guarantee them much wealth and prosperity. As time progressed, so did many kings. There were good ones, and there were some that were less than good. The Magna Carta was established in 1215 because of one brutal king, King John. The Magna Carta assured that the all future kings of England had the same rights as the nobles or the people that lived there. In England, the king also had to rule with Parliament. Parliament had control of the treasury or the purse, which meant that no king could make a law without the approval of Parliament because Parliament had the money to make the law happen. France also established the Estates General, which was like Parliament, but never quite as powerful because their Parliament or Estates General did not have the power of the purse. While there were bad kings, there were kings that were also struggling for authority. Pope Gregory and Henry IV of Germany struggled for power because of lay investiture. Lay men or kings would appoint bishops. Pope Gregory wanted to end this and ban lay investiture. He wanted to pick who the bishops were. The resolution was that Henry was excommunicated, and when he apologized, he was allowed back in the church. In addition, the popes would decide who the bishops were, and the kings would give them a manor or fief. When the kings and popes were fighting, more and more and more, eventually a distraction came along, which was the Muslim attacks of the Holy Land. The Muslims and the Christians fought in over a hundred years of crusades on and off. The Christians took back the Holy Land after the first crusade, but lost it indefinitely thereafter. The Crusades opened up the eyes of the Europeans. They were explored to the advanced Muslim technology and medicine, goods, and new ways of doing things, and they wanted to continue to have access to these resources. 
Access to good resources also brought access to bad. Trade routes end up bringing the Black Death or the plague, one of the greatest plagues to ever hit Europe. One out of three people died. Morale was horrible. Governments were in anarchy. The economy slowed. And people were left questioning the church that couldn't stop this from happening. The plague that brought a blip in Europe's progress later brought the Renaissance, or rebirth. There was a lot of wealth in Italy, and they had access to trading ports, access to the Vatican, and as a result, a lot of cultural bloom occurred. Michelangelo sculpted the David and painted the Sistine Chapel. Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Shakespeare wrote many plays, like Romeo and Juliet. Sir Thomas More talked about utopia, where people were equal in society. Niccolo Machiavelli advised the princes how to act, and sometimes harshly if necessary. And Raphael painted the School of Athens. This was an inspiration for the people then and the people years to come. One of the greatest inventions was the printing press by Johann Gutenberg. This allowed mass production of the Bible, so many people could read it and many people could have interpretations. Martin Luther had his own interpretation, which is that people could achieve salvation or access to heaven through faith alone. He wanted to ban indulgences, which is paying for forgiveness of sins. John Calvin thought people were predetermined or predestined to go to heaven. He did not feel that anything that happened in their life could bring them to either heaven or hell. And Henry VIII of England wanted a divorce from his wife who would not produce a male heir. As a result, he started the Church of England, or Anglican Church, which still exists today. In response to losing one out of three followers in Europe, the Catholic Church had a counter-reformation, which they reestablished their Catholic values. They didn't change much, but they vowed to try to follow them more strictly. New ideas of the Renaissance led to new ideas for trade. How could Europe cut out the middleman and get to the spices that they really wanted to preserve food? So the age of exploration began, led by Spain and Portugal. Portugal navigated around Africa to reach the Spice Islands. Spain thought maybe if we went west, we could get east. The line of demarcation was established by the Pope, dividing the New World between Spain on the west and Portugal on the east. Mercantilism was a policy that resulted because of the age of exploration. Mercantilism sought to make the parent country or European country profitable by exporting more and importing less. The colony served a major part in mercantilism. This political cartoon shows that the colony's only existence was to support the mother or parent country. Exploration came with a cost. Many Africans were shipped from Africa to the Americas to serve as free labor so that products could be harvested and shipped back to Europe. Many Native Americans died because of disease, and the ones that lived were removed from their homeland. More money in Europe led to inflation, which then led to a price revolution. Monarchs struggled with how to keep their nations more powerful. An age of absolutism resulted where the kingdoms struggled to gain and maintain power over the other monarchs in Europe. Some examples of how absolutism worked was Spain with their armada that was the strongest armada of its time. France used the castle Versailles to keep friends close and enemies closer under Louis XIV. Prussia had the most powerful army of its time. Austria's Maria Theresa taxed the wealthy for a change rather than the poor. And Russia's Peter the Great wanted to westernize. He wanted to be like the French, and so he visited there and studied there and wanted to bring the culture back to Russia. He also saw a warm water port which would guarantee a really freezing Russia access to trade all year round. Yet Catherine the Great was the one who achieved it for him. While all of these monarchs tried to exercise total or absolute power, England, however, did not. They had a limited monarch because, as you recall, whoever the monarch was there had to rule with parliament, 
and could not do otherwise because Parliament had control of all the money in England. If you wanted to make a prediction for the future, it would be safe to say with all this absolutism and power that the people that did not have power were only going to take it for so long and eventually attempt to revolt over the few who did.